Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today's video is for the photographer that is new to Luminar Neo. Perhaps you just purchased it or you downloaded the fully working free trial. Either way, you're wondering how do you go about processing an image in Luminar Neo? Well, in today's video, I'm going to give you the basics to get you started processing your images in Luminar Neo. We're going to be working on this image. I think the most common image most of us process is a travel, landscape, seascape, cityscape image. And this image kind of encompasses all those types of images into one. Now it is a raw file. I'm in the edit panel of Luminar Neo. And what I like to do is I like to straighten the image first. So I go to the crop tool and there's a couple different ways you could do it. A few different ways actually. You could just click this crop AI and it will give you a suggested crop. Now I don't really like that. I don't like what it did. If you don't like it and you want to reset it, go over here in this little circular arrow, click there and you'll reset it. Another way is because it's a little crooked, I just could click horizontal alignment and it will straighten it and actually did a pretty good job there. Another way if you don't like either of those here why don't I reset that is you can just go off the image to either side left or right and you'll see when you do that you get this kind of circular arrow. With that you could just click and drag with your mouse and then when you click you'll see you get this tight grid and you could just kind of straighten the image that way. And I just drag down a little bit and when you're happy with your crop, or in this case, my straightening of the image, just close the crop tool and you'll commit to that crop. Now, from this point, there's a couple different ways you could go. If you're really new to post-processing and you don't really understand all these different sliders that are involved for tone and color, and you just want to process an image very quickly so you could share it with someone, go to the Enhance tool. It's Enhance AI. And with actually the single slider, you could get a full edit done on your image. And that single slider is the Accent AI slider. And you watch, as I move it to the right, just give it a second to render, you can see it, it, it edited the tone, it edited the color, it added sharpening, it got rid of some of the noise. So with that one slider, you could really do everything uh, as far as the image is concerned. If you need the sky to be processed a little more, you could go to that Sky Enhancer AI and move that to the right. And that generally adds contrast and makes the blue a little bluer in the sky. Now, I'm not going to use this tool today, so I'm going to reset it so that we'll go back uh, to the beginning. By the way, if you want to totally reset your image and start right from the beginning, let's say you started processing and you went down a rabbit hole, and it's no it's just not working for you go down to the very bottom where it says actions and just click on then to revert to original and you can see we're back to our original raw file that is crooked so i'm going to quickly go to the crop tool and i'm going to quickly re-straighten it close that down now the way that you're probably going to want to process your image is using the develop tool first and you can see because this is a raw file it says develop raw if you're working on any other file type, it will just say develop. The develop raw tool has a little more functionality compared to the develop tool. The develop raw tool includes profiles. And if you go to that drop down, you can see that there's some camera profiles in here. These were the profiles that were available in my Nikon camera uh, when if, you know I took these, this image. So if I wanted to, I could have set the same camera to let's say camera landscape. But with Luminar, if you're working on a raw file, you're able to do that uh, right here. Now, again, if it's not a raw file, you won't see this here. You won't see the camera profile. The other thing that the develop raw tool has that the develop tool does not have has to do with white balance. If I open up the color tool down here, you could see that the temperature is in Kelvin, see 5,707, 5, and it's set a little bit. You can see how the temperature and tent have settings done to them. On the develop tool, not the develop raw tool, on the develop tool, you won't get Kelvin. You'll just have from uh, 100 to minus 100 
uh, slider. The reason I bring this up is because the white balance is more effectively adjusted on a raw file using the Kelvin scale. So if you're working uh, with a raw file, you should do this you know, with the raw file down here. Uh, it will work best. Now, I mentioned this is where we're going to start. All I did so far on the uh, image is I straightened it. So what I would do is I would go to the light section and since it's exposed properly, I usually then jump down to highlights and shadows and I look at the image and see what it needs most. Well, some of those dark parts of the image are a little too dark, so I'll open the shadows first. And then some of these brighter parts of the clouds, there's no detail in there, so I'll bring highlights down until I get some detail in there. So I effectively made the image flatter. I took away some contrast. I could add contrast back with Smart Contrast, but what I prefer to do, and I'll reset this slider by double clicking right on it, is I prefer to go to the whites and black section and get a white and black point. To do that, what I do is I hit the J key on my keyboard. And by the way, this works when you have the histogram showing. If you don't see the histogram, go up to view and make sure that show histogram has a check mark on it. Now, again, with the histogram showing and whites and blacks open, I'll hit the J key on my keyboard. And what that does, it turns on these clipping indicators. They're the little circles that are on either side of the histogram. I'll hit the J key again. You'll see that they turn off. J key, they're on. Nothing has changed with the image, but if I take the whites and I move it to the far right, you'll start to see some red go on the screen. That means I'm clipping the highlights. When you're clipping the highlights, you're removing any detail. You're obliterating any detail. It's absolute white. So if you go to uh, print this image with the highlights clipped, you won't get any ink put down on the paper at all. Typically, I don't like to clip the highlights at all, so I'll take that white slider and back it off until all that red just disappears, and I don't see any red anywhere. So that is the point, it just disappears. For me, the way I process my images, that is a correct white point. Similarly, for blacks, if I move that to the left, eventually you'll see blue go on the screen. That means we're clipping the blacks or crushing the shadows. Most often, people don't like to do that either. If you're going to print that, you'll just get black ink put down there and there won't be any detail. Now, personally, I like to clip the shadows just a little bit. So I will adjust this, usually let it render. So there's just maybe a little bit of clipping going on down here for me and over here. For me, that just seems to add a lot of uh, tonal um, range to the image that I like. So that looks good to me turn the clipping indicators off, hit the J key again. So we've done the light section. We've done the blacks and whites section. Now we optionally, we could do curves. Sometimes I might do something with curves. If I think maybe the midtones are a little darker, a little uh, light, I'll go right in the middle, let's say, and move this around uh, to try to affect the midtones. Or maybe I'll use this to add contrast. I'll put the S curve in here, something like that to adjust curves. Now in this case, I don't think it really needs much done here. I'll just kind of straighten these out a little bit. I think something like that maybe. Let me just bring those up just a little bit. So that's optional. Curves is maybe an advanced tool. Uh, if you're new to post-processing, you might not um, want to use curves right away. You don't have to. Just because a tool is available doesn't mean you have to use it. So that's curves. Next is color. There's, um, I mentioned before, if you're working on a raw file, you'll have uh, the temperature adjustment in Kelvin, in the scale of Kelvin. So you could adjust that. Also, um, you could get a white balance by going to this drop down or going to this um, eyedropper. Click on the eyedropper and you could click something that's supposed to be neutral. Neutral means it's either white, gray, or black. So you could like click on the clouds and that will give you a white balance adjustment because um, that's white, of course. You just don't want to click on anything that does have color in it. Uh, that would throw off the white balance adjustment. So that's fine. We could add some vibrance or saturation. The difference is 
Saturation will adjust to every color equally, meaning if I take saturation and I move it to the right, it's going to increase the saturation of every single color equally, and it will oversaturate colors. So when I move it to the extreme right, you can see a lot of colors are oversaturated. Similarly, if I move it to the left, it's going to remove color from all the colors equally till eventually I have a black and white image. Now, vibrance, on the other hand, will bring colors to saturation, but it won't oversaturate anything if you move it to the right. Furthermore, vibrance doesn't affect yellows and oranges as much. So if you have a person in the image, it will not affect their skin tone. You could try this out on an image that has a person in it. Move saturation to the right and eventually you're going to need to give them a sunburn. With vibrance, you'll notice it doesn't affect their skin as much. So vibrance might be a better choice when you have an image that doesn't have saturated color or does have saturated colors, I'm sorry, and may have an, a person in the image. On the other hand, if you have an image that doesn't have saturated colors, you may want to move saturation and doesn't have an, a person in the image. So there's my adjustment there. You can, of course, move them both if you find that you need to. Next, we have sharpness down here. And this is pretty sharp as it is. What I like to do is zoom in on something with detail like City Hall off here in the distance and move this to the right and give it a second to render and look at the sharpness. And you can move with the different sliders. Um, masking will move it away from like large swaths of like areas of the image that do not have any detail. For instance, this blue area here has no detail. If you add sharpening to the image globally, it will start to enhance any noise that might be in this section. What you could do is move masking to the right, and you'll notice it will keep the detailed areas sharp, but it will remove the sharpening from those areas that don't have detail, and it will um, not allow it to enhance noise. Uh, now this image was shot with an Nikon Z7 II with an ISO of 64. So there really isn't a lot of noise, but I could come in and move around like the luminosity uh, slider a little bit to the right. That's the luminance noise. And there's color noise. If there was, I could remove those. But as I mentioned, this was shot at very, very, very low ISO. So there's not really a lot to worry about there. Now, as far as optics are concerned, uh, auto distortion corrections. You can click that. Fix any chromatic aberration. It doesn't hurt to click those all the time. And auto defringe. It doesn't really affect the image overall visually, but it will get rid of any fringes you might have uh, induced when you were doing adjustments or any chromatic aber aberration that was introduced by your lens. And of course, it will fix any distortion that was induced by your lens. Uh, done automatically. You can come in and move the sliders if you feel you need to adjust them further. Transform tool. Uh, typically on uh, cityscapes, a lot of times if you're using a wide angle lens and you're not shooting straight on, you have the camera tilted up or down, you'll get some type of distortion. Usually the buildings are falling backwards. Uh, in this case, they aren't falling backwards too much, but if they were, you can move this vertical slider to the left and make them stand straighter up. Um, and then horizontal, similarly, if you were doing different, you know, different distortions induced by a wide angle lens. When you're shooting any type of scene that should have very straight verticals or horizontals or very square corners. So if you're doing real estate photography and you're using a wide angle lens on a room and the corners aren't like at 90 degrees, there's the lines are distorted. You could come in and move these sliders to take care of all that. So far, I think we're done pretty good. Now, let's close this down, and I want to make you aware of something. Notice now it doesn't say develop AI anymore. It just says develop. And I mentioned that the develop tool uh, doesn't have any profiles. You see there's no profiles compared to the develop AI tool. And also, if we go down to color, you can see that the temperature is not in a Kelvin scale anymore. It's going from zero, or it's set at zero, and it will go to uh, 100 and minus 100. Um, with uh, Luminar Neo, you could put more than one instance of any tool. So let's just say uh, that I 
want to go back in and readjust the blacks adjustment I did. If you go to develop and try to redo it here, you're adding another instance of the develop and you notice all the sliders are zeroed out. What you need to do is go to edits and all your edits are kept track here in reverse order and here's my develop raw tool that I did earlier. If I open that up, you could see there's my edits. And I mentioned, let's say maybe I want to readjust the blacks a little bit. So you could readjust anything. So that's kind of the power of this application in that, um, let's get rid of that one, we don't need that. In that you could go back in and readjust things by going to the edits tab, or you could add more than one instance of any tool. So if I wanted to add another instance of the develop tool, but this time I want it to only affect the sky, I could open up this instance of the develop tool. I could go to masking and I could go to AI mask. It will examine the image and find different elements in the image. And once it does, it will give you the choice of editing those elements independently of everything else. So it found sky, architecture, water, transport, which are the boats, and man-made ground, which is probably up over in here. But I wanted to edit the sky, so I'll click on sky, and you'll see that eventually a red overlay will appear showing us that it's the sky. So we could go to adjustments, and I could add some maybe contrast to the sky. Or I could add some sharpness to the sky. So these effects, and I, here I'll show you, it's only affecting the sky. See? So that's how we added another instance of the develop tool. In this case, it was develop, not develop raw. And if I want to re-edit it, again, go over to the edits tab. And here it is right at top. Everything's in reverse order. So develop raw was global. It adjusted the entire image. And develop, I used masking so it only affected the sky. And I could come back in and readjust that if I find that I need to. Go back to tools. and. Typically, you know, now it's just like finishing touches. The uh, image is pretty much adjusted the way I like it. I removed noise as needed. I sharpened it as needed. Um, I could go to this landscape slider. If there was any haze, I could remove any haze with the dehaze. If I wanted to make it look a little more like golden hour, I can move this to the right. So it just kind of gives it a little more warmth. If I want to enhance the foliage, I move this to the right. And you can see it kind of adds a little more like yellow to the greens, like especially in these bushes down in here. I don't really like that, so I'm going to undo that. I'll undo this a little bit. Um, again, all of these have masking, so if I only wanted to affect certain specific parts of the image, I'm able to do that as, as well. I could add a vignette. I like to add a darker vignette. And we move this to the left for the darker vignette. This kind of helps pull everyone's attention more towards the middle. And with this, I could affect the size of the vignette. So if I could put it on max, you could see that how that affects the size. There's advanced settings for the effect, uh, vignette here, the roundness of the vignette, the feathering of the vignette, and the inner light. You could make the center brighter. So what I like to do, let me uh, reset this entire tool, is I'll add the vignette like this. Also, I should add, you could choose the subject. Maybe you don't want the vignette to be right in the center. You want it to be off center, like on City Hall. So you could just click there. You'll get a crosshair cursor. Click on City Hall. Now the vignette will be centered here. Then what I could do is then like add a little darker vignette. Then what I typically do is add that darker vignette because that again helps people push more towards the middle. I leave size usually alone, but I'll go to inner light. I'll brighten it up just a little bit right in that middle area. So you can see. Just a little bit though. I don't want it to, I want it to be very subtle, not very noticeable. Um, so that's the way I apply a vignette. Um, then there's a lot of creative things. These are more advanced tools that you could use uh, to relight the scene, uh, brightness near. So you could come in and just play around with any of these um, these adjustments. If you want to reset it, click this circular arrow in the corner of each tool. It's only there once you do an adjustment. You can see it up here. If 
you want to see a before after, click the little eyeball. There's before and there's after. So you're able to do that. And you'll notice uh, then again in edits, all your edits are there. There's relight that I just did, the vignette, the landscape, the second develop adjustment I did, which was just to the sky. And of course, the original develop raw, which was global to the entire image. And again, just come in and practice them. If you want to get back to where you started, go down to actions and click on revert to original and you could reset the entire image and start over again. So that's the very basics of editing in Luminar Neo. I think the thing most of us who are used to processing images need to get used to with Luminar Neo is that you could add more than one instance of any tool and you have to remember that your original edit that you did with that tool is over here in the edits panel. So you might go, um, you might start adjusting and do your um, develop AI adjustments or develop raw adjustments, I'm sorry, and then start going down and doing other things and you go, oh, I really need to open up shadows more and you go back and open another instance of the develop tool with all the sliders at zero when you really wanted to go over to the edits panel and go to the original develop raw and edit that which has your adjustments preserved there that you could then re-edit so hopefully that helps you get started using luminar neo now i'm really really um a bit confused about where i should go with my luminar training if you have any suggestions i know there's a lot of great teachers on youtube that teach luminar and they teach every single tool and I don't think I really want to do that uh, because that's been done. I mean, uh, Jim Nix, I suggest you check his channel. He's a, a great uh, Luminar teacher. He teaches just probably every little nook and cranny that's found in Luminar. Uh, check out his uh, channel. Um, but any suggestions of what you want me to do, let me know in the comments below. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.